Ungefragt. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and we are back with yet another life challenge. Okay guys, so today we are going to talk about how to survive a shitty day. We unfortunately also have to warn you for a quite a shitty audio quality. So we were unable to record that episode in the studio. So please forgive us for the quality of the audio and it will be good again in a week. So stay tuned and enjoy still very good quality of the content. We don't know many details mm -hmm. about that challenge. So it's quite open, but I must say that when working on solving that challenge, I really felt like I have managed to help myself. It actually was a good reminder of many things that I have already known or read about or heard about. And I started to do them again. Yeah, we actually also discovered accidentally that many times we help ourselves, meaning uh, I help myself and Marta help herself by uh, by solving the challenge from you guys. So I guess we should say thank you. So I am deeply grateful for being able to do what we are doing. Are you practicing gratitude right now, Marta? Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, that's one of the options. But that's a, that's I, a teaser to the option. Yeah, but actually that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm really grateful for doing that both uh, with you and for our readers, listeners, and so on. Oh my God, this is heavy. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you as well. Uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty funny how when we get those challenges and sometimes they are not even, we think they are not so related to us as persons. We discover so many things on the way. So it's a fantastic, fantastic experience. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think it's time to read the challenge. Yes, I will read the challenge now. Every month I get a few of those days where I'm really feeling under the weather. Recently, there are more of those days as the winter is coming. And since I'm living in Denmark, where it's cold, rainy and windy for six months, I get really affected by this weather. A small disappointment at work or a tough day at home with kids gets me to feel completely down. Unfortunately, I can't just hide under the blanket, so I was wondering if you have any tips for how to survive a really shitty day. First of all, I think it's more than six months. <laughs> uh, our dear, what's the name? Isabella. Our dear Isabella, I think it's more than six months of the rainy and windy and dark weather in Denmark. Um, I, I, I have a feeling it's more like nine. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's the feeling I have right now. Because you are right, the winter is coming, indeed. Yeah, maybe she just pressed a wrong, uh, you know, number when she was uh, sending the challenge and she pressed six instead of nine. Could be, could be, because uh, six, it's very optimistic. When we have six months of this weather, that's a good year in Denmark. Or maybe it was like, you know, six months is really dark mm -hmm. and six months, it's like quite a lot of light. The rain and wind, that's actually yeah. more like 11 months. Correcto! <laughs> uh, yeah, that was weird. Correcto? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it came from. <laughs> Is that like, uh, so correct, aka correcto. So, Marta, uh, what options do we have for our dear Isabella? Yeah, so first I wanted to say that we, of course, all have some of those really crappy days. Yeah, all of us. Yeah, we, sometimes we wake up completely down. Sometimes we wake up okay and something happens and gets us completely down. Sometimes we have periods in our lives or we have periods every month. You know, it could be... But that's for ladies. <laughs> but I think the man can also suffer when the lady has a period. So I think it's like, yeah, it's good to listen when your partner has a period. 
then you have shitty days, <laughs> trust me. So maybe it's right. Yeah, it depends yeah. on yeah, yeah on it, the level of PMS. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it it can, can be scary, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, it can differ also. Correcto. <laughs> I think it will become our new uh, thing, correct? I, I yes. like it. Okay, so coming back to the topic, I wanted to say that if those days just happens, you know, a few days a month, or if it's just a period of time in your life, then you can use some of those things that we are presenting here today. If it's like deeper issues, if it's something where you start noticing that there is more of those days that are really shitty uh, over a longer period of time, then you should seek some other help uh, than you've got five options only. Yeah, that's true. Correcto. Correcto, yes. So the five options we have for you today are option number one, practice gratitude. Option number two, B or C, your best friend. Option number three, Address your difficult emotions. Option number four, do something that you love to do. And option number five, use the oldest medicine. Laugh about it. So these are the five options. And uh, I started to use them right away as uh, I'm also in Denmark and the winter is coming to me too. Yes. And I have had some of those uh, more crappy days uh, than cool days. I have started to use uh, those options that we have prepared here and they work. Yeah, uh, I admit that I also use some of them, especially option number five. And uh, I think some of them are a rather short term solution that they will give you like a immediate boost. Some of them can help you for a longer term. So it's uh, like you have a really like a big palette to choose from. Yeah, and we don't have many details. We don't know if you are like a mom who is with small kids at home. You mentioned something about a job. We don't know what exactly causes your bad mood and so on. So you have to select from that palette and apply, you know, depending on the situation. Yeah. Exactly, uh, you are very mysterious, Isabella. Yeah, that's true. And the, the name also, it's like reflecting the mysterious uh, vibe in you. That's why we chose it. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful name. It's a really beautiful name. Yeah. So, uh, practice gratitude. It may sound a bit strange at the beginning. And, you know, what do you mean practice gratitude when I'm like pissed off with my boss or my kids uh, don't, let me live mm -hmm. uh, in peace or something but it's amazing it's actually something that if we open to it and we start doing it in our everyday life it's something that can really change our outlook to the life in general it's like shifting your approach from uh, looking into your glass half empty into looking into your glass as half full yeah. That's the best way to, to put it. And when we talk about practicing gratitude, we at least prepared it in two different um, ways in this challenge. One thing is about the general practicing gratitude in your everyday life, like concentrating at looking at those little things mm -hmm. that you do have, that you love. And I think, Anna, maybe you could give a couple of examples as it's something that comes to you naturally, this kind of like natural gratitude that you feel in everyday life. Well, uh, uh, some of those uh, examples might be a little bit cuckoo because I'm, I'm sometimes cuckoo, right? But, uh, well, one of the very, very uh, most basic examples is sometimes when I'm coming home and it's really cold outside. It's, I'm in Denmark. And then I'm entering my place and it's warm and nice and I really love my place and I'm like, oh my God, thank God I'm home. I really love to be here. And then I look at my place and I'm so happy that I arranged it in this way that it's a cozy place and I feel so totally grateful. And the funny thing is that this is not my dream house, for instance, but it's, it's still... I made it my own and in those moments I really appreciate something like a roof. Um above my head, a warm place to come back to. Uh, I also have that uh, moments when I walk around and suddenly I look at the tree and I'm thinking, my God, this world is beautiful. Look how this tree is created. Okay, this is really cuckoo. But I have those moments when I really look at elements of, of environment 
natural environment, nature actually can really like take my breath away, like a sunset or a sunrise or a full moon or whatever. And I feel totally grateful that I can experience that. I don't think it's very cuckoo. I thought you will really come up with something cuckoo, as I know you can. But it was exactly <laughs> it was exactly what I meant here. Changing our approach into looking into how all those small yet so great wonders around mm. us. Yeah. And the nature in the winter time in Denmark can be pretty disappearing like the tree will not even have leaves for six months or eight or something yeah, like true. that then it may be a good idea to have some plants at home and stare at them if you have such a nice home. I, I actually have a lot of plants home and I stare at them and I would like to also say that I lately am, um, how do you call it, breeding roses? Breeding? Like, no, breeding, it's animals. You make animals to make... Uh, <laughs> like you, you mean you, the, the whole process of taking care of your plants, yeah? Yes, like, like from... that they grow, I'm growing plants. Is it another Google time? That do we have it's to... another Google time. I was just trying to figure out how you make animals to... Uh, Coco Jumbo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, now we are entering some completely different topics. Google time. Well, if breeding animals can be something that you can find gratitude in, I think it's also a good idea. But about plants, for instance, that's a very good example. I remember I bought those uh, roses and I was so terrible with roses all my life. And then one day I decided, okay, so you are dying. I will save you, little fella. And I started to really take care of that rose. And then when the first rose came out, I was like the happiest person in the universe. I was like looking at this little rose and I was so happy and grateful and appreciative of my awesome botanical skills as well. It really, it changed my mood for the entire day. I was so happy to see a little rose that just came out from this bunch of, yeah, branches because the leaves were not there yet. So, for instance, small things like this. Wow, I can just put my washing machine on and it just washing my clothes. It's really weird, but I have a lot of those moments. I think that's why I usually feel quite happy with my life. And I think that this is precisely why I asked you to talk about it, because I uh, knew you will have uh, abundance of those <laughs> moments. But that's really about it. We take a lot of things for granted, mm -hmm. but even something like water coming out from our faucet, there are still so many people in the yeah. world that don't even have the water they could drink, wash their hands in, really shifting our approach into noticing those things. You know when we start to be really grateful and this is really sad although also very good because then you realize that you have things to be grateful for. For instance when you get sick when you get totally sick and everything hurts and you lay down in a bed and then you are like oh my god I just want to be healthy it was so good to be healthy. Think that you take for granted your health when you suddenly feel sick and you feel really sick then you suddenly start to appreciate it. Appreciating things that normally we take for granted is a skill, but you can practice that. It just requires shifting your mindset and also a little bit of curiosity, you know, like observing small little everyday things. I have a really great video for how to look at the world with those different eyes. Okay. So I'll link that video. Do you also have a video on how to breed animals because some people could use it? I think maybe YouTube can help, have, help yeah. us here. Yeah. yeah. So the other part of the gratitude uh, that I thought about uh, was also when you are affected by a particular thing in your life. Let's say it's your job. I don't know. You have colleagues or your boss that is really pissing you off or you have a hard time with your kids. Writing down what you're grateful about in regards to your kids or your job, whatever it is that, whatever is the aspect that is currently the one causing your bad mood can really help. I've had this time uh, when I was having a hard time uh, with uh, my, with one of my kids and I've heard about this exercise and it was really great whenever we've had those rough moments in his uh, developmental phase. I uh, would imagine myself how I feel when I'm with him in the good moments. Mm. 
So I just try to bring myself to a moment when uh, when he's happy, when we are doing something nice together or when he was a baby and I was holding him close and bringing that feeling to you really helps to feel the gratitude really and shift your approach to the kid. You can do the same with your work. Why are you still grateful for having that work? It gives you some money. It gives you, if it's the boss that pisses you off, maybe you still have nice colleagues. Maybe it's there is still a part of that job that brings you satisfaction. So concentrating on those things, bringing the feeling, the good feeling that it gives you, the part that you still like or the part that you are still grateful for, can really help you on those shitty days. Yeah, I totally agree. And here I have just three things I would like to say. And probably I will forget the third one. As you know, I have a problem with that. But number one, Marta, very good point with writing down those things. And I actually love it because sometimes uh, it's, it's just a fantastic exercise okay, I have a really shitty day, I have to come up with 10 things. It doesn't even have to be particularly about the job if it's the job that causes your distress. But in general, 10 things I'm grateful for. And you can have a notebook and you can add every day those things. I have done this year something different. So I made a, a glass container to which I'm putting post-it with all the small things I'm grateful for or all the good things that have happened to me. And I have some better weeks and some worse weeks. For instance, now I realized I haven't put anything in that jar for like, I think a month or so, but I had periods that I was putting uh, two, three post-it every day and now it's full already. And uh, then I was like, okay, and by the end of the year on 31st of December, I will open it how i don't know because i realized that the neck of the battle is a bottleneck <laughs> but i will make it and i will read all those small little things that i have written all over the year all the things i'm grateful for and i am already getting excited and i look at this and i see oh my god there is a lot of post-it and i have two thoughts it will be so fantastic and then how the hell i will get them out of there but uh, it's, it, it was a fantastic uh, exercise for me. So if you can create yourself a, a gratitude jar or box or whatever and, and just collect those little post-it for the things that have happened, uh, I think then you can uh, really have a beautiful end of the year and you can really lift your spirit. Yeah, that sounds great. I just wanted to give a disclaimer before we move to the next uh, point that we still have to be thinking about if something in our life is really not working. It may be our subconsciousness that is trying to communicate with us through those shitty days that there is something deeper that needs to be um, addressed. Yes. Then writing a few things that you are grateful for may not necessarily solve the issues for you. So practicing gratitude is always a good idea. And I think it's one of those ingredients for a lifelong, happy, uh, joyful life. But you still cannot expect that it will solve the issues for you. It's wonderful if you can be grateful for what you have in your life. But that doesn't mean that you uh, don't have to progress or change. So that was just a disclaimer. And now we will move to option number two, which was be or see your best friend. Mm. So I just thought about it when one of the reasons why uh, you have a shitty day is because, you know, someone pissed you off or something really bad happened. Just shifting into being grateful for having water in the faucet may not really work. You may need to do some venting. You may need to, you know, get that shit out of your system. So that's <laughs> what is the better way to do it? Throw that shit on your best friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But here I wanted to say that uh, I'm also mentioning the part of being your own best friend. True. So it's really about taking it out of your system. It's not to indulge in it forever. It's not to, you know, dig into that shit <laughs> and stay under. It's about... Uh, on a totally different note, uh, shit is a perfect uh, fertilizer for 
uh, growing flowers. I, I don't think that mental shit is the perfect uh, fertilizer. I think it's the opposite. I think the plants need... The mental plants. shit is a perfect fertilizer for making you into a better person. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> we have to kind of make something, some mem out of I, it. I'm awesome. still not sure if you are uh, 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 ironic here or... Uh... <laughs> I'm not sure myself. Let's yeah. listen to it later and decide. Okay. Okay, but the thing was that you may need to take this out of your system, either by talking to your best friend, going out, having a coffee, or maybe by writing it down if uh, non, no good friend is uh, accessible. It could be a recorded message, it could be a written message on Messenger, whatever. Sometimes it's good to take it out of your system before you can try, for example, the gratitude exercise. So that was what I wanted to address. Another thing that I wanted to address in that option is be your best friend. We so, already talked about it before and I think it's totally, totally important to have this shift and look at yourself as you are your own best friend. It's it, just to get out of your skin for a second and think what would I do if I would be another person who's the best friend to myself. Yeah. I don't know, I think I even made it worse. In general, we have talked about it and we will be repeating this uh, forever and ever because some of us have an issue with that. Uh, being uh, your own best friend, you can guess who that is, we will not tell you. Unfortunately, <laughs> correcto. <laughs> so basically, it's amazing how we people, some of us at least, beat ourselves up or beat ourselves down. Beat ourselves down. Super English. Anyway, we are bad to ourselves. We can find a lot of love and we can take care of other people, but we are not so good with applying that love, compassion to ourselves. Yeah, exactly. We are so good at, at giving advices to other people and we cannot apply them in our own life, for instance. So it's so important. If your best friend would have a shitty day, if she really, I don't know, something really bad happened to her or someone really pissed her off, you wouldn't be trying to make it worse for her. You would actually say, hey, you've had a crappy day. Maybe you have a good cup of tea or a good cup of coffee. Maybe you watch a nice movie, whatever. You would try to be good to her rather mm -hmm. than trying to tell her, get lost. <laughs> <laughs> or for instance, to tell her, you're stupid. Just cheer up, you know, cheer up. What is your problem? Because many times I think people talk like that to themselves like what's wrong with you why are you are down why can you be just happy like come on get motivated or whatever uh, this is how we talk to ourselves would we talk like this to our friends i don't think so because we wouldn't have friends after some time i guess no one wants to be around a person like this so no wonder sometimes we don't want to be around ourselves because we are really bitches towards ourselves yeah i think this is something that doesn't serve any purpose you're not gonna feel better if you're bitching yourself. So it really, when you think about it, when you just take a little bit of a distance and you think about those things that you tell to yourself, they don't serve any purpose. They don't bring anything good to you. You will just feel worse. Exactly. And just on a final note here in this option, I will just come back to the importance of friendships in, in our life, not only with ourselves, but also with, uh, with, with just with our close ones. And I do have to say that, for instance, in my case, many times when I have shitty days or something happened, at the beginning, I like to stay only with myself. That's, that's how I cope with it at the beginning. But then I need my friends. And my friends have saved me from so many stupid situations just by being there for me, just by making me laugh. And, uh, you know, uh, if you know my struggles with uh, Ikebana from the previous podcast, uh, you know also that I decided to um, educate myself a little bit about Japanese culture. And one of the reasons why, uh, from what I've heard already in the audiobook that I purchased, why Japanese people live so long is because they have a very... Uh, good communities and they have a lot of close relations with their neighbors with their friends and they feel like they belong and they feel they have people they can reach out to each time they have any issues 
And it is uh, scientifically proven that having friends around you, it's, it's not that you have to have, I don't know, 1,000 friends of, on Facebook, but just having close people around you uh, really actually influence the length and quality of your life. And I think friendships are extremely important. And let's just try to cherish them and, uh, and build them stronger. I think this is really well said. <clears throat> and just on a final note, remember to take care of all those dear friends, including yourself. Exactly. Include yourself in that friend circle. Friends are very important. Having that safety net, yes. someone that will catch you, Exactly. It's really important for our well-being. Yeah, and actually, if I'm to be honest, my longest relationships in my life are my friendships. It's not, well, okay, uh, yeah, it's not the romantic relationships, but m like Marta, we are friends for more than 20 years. Since kindergarten, guys. Exactly, since kindergarten, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but it's like, this is uh, the uh, number one relation that I feel like fully investing still and that really keeps me uh, sane many times. It's amazing, but but friendships are simply uh, wonderful. It's like I'm all for friendships. I always was. I'm a sucker for friendship, guys. And I'm also a very good friend with myself, I think. And that's, that's why it's important. Both ingredients are very important for our well-being, especially on those shitty days. That's it for today, people. We will be back on Wednesday with the second part of the How to Survive a Shitty Day Challenge. We hope you join us on Wednesday. Bye! You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday. Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.youvegot5options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app. Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz. Radio i Aarhus på FM 88,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.